it's Reagan and today I'm here to do my seasonal recommendations video and today that means I'm going to be recommending to you today spring reads. There's something about making these videos that I just love pulling together a collection of books that I feel like kind of epitomizes the season for one way or another for me personally obviously and today I, and today I have a stack of books that I can't wait to share with you all to recommend. For my spring reading recommendations video I decided to go kind of with like an atmospheric lush landscape route because that's kind of what I think like everything is in bloom there's a lot of rain there's a lot of atmosphere but there's also like new growth kind of so with that in mind I have a lot of really atmospheric or very interesting and setting books to show off some are fun some are a little dark but anyway without further ado let's just go ahead and dive right in the first book I'm gonna recommend is the wicked deep by Shea Earnshaw this is an eerie but also incredibly atmospheric witch setter novel set in the Pacific Northwest during the summertime but because it's it's kind of cold there, there's lots of rain and mist and sailing. I feel like it also kind of fits the misty setting that I'm kind of going for for a spring read. This is centered in a small Pacific Northwest town where in 1822, three sisters were accused of witches and were drowned in the harbor in the town. Ever since their drowning, these sisters have haunted the town and sought revenge every year. And they seek this revenge by every summer they come back and they possess uh, a body of a girl in town, each one does, and they basically s spend their time trying to lure young boys into the harbor to drown them. And this happens every single year. There's always casualties and no one knows who is possessed and who isn't. So there's a lot of intrigue and mistrust and fear within the town. Our main character in this story, Penny Talbot, has lived in this town her entire life and she is like many of the residents that live there just become grudgingly accepting of this horrible curse that happens every year. No one's really going out of their way to try to solve the curse or the mystery is just something that happened. Everyone just kind of puts their head down and bears it and hopes that it doesn't impact them. However, when a new boy shows up in town right before the um, sister season is about to start, Penny feels bad and um, kind of gets wrapped up a little more in the mystery than she ever intended. This novel, again, is dark, incredibly eerie, but also like such a cool premise. We, again, don't know who is possessed by who. We don't know who's gonna be the next victim. So there's always this sense of urgency and anxiety as you're reading this novel. It also was really, really beautifully written and the setting itself I think is incredibly interesting and we jump perspectives including some of the sisters' perspectives which I found to be super enjoyable. I ended up reading this book in one sitting when I read it and I just think it's so delicious so I had to recommend. This book I'm going to recommend is definitely rich in setting and very dark and that is Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. This is a book I read a few months ago and I really enjoyed it. It has this very, very dark, very eerie setting, but it also has this whimsy and humor to it, which kind of lightens the mood, even when it's scary and spooky, which it is. This is a story set in London Below. London Below is a place where people have fallen through the cracks, and once they basically fall through these cracks and end up in London Below, they cannot be seen or interact with anyone in London above. And it's exactly what happens to our main character who ends up below on accident by helping a stranger in the street. And he's basically just like running through London below, getting wrapped up in this crazy adventure, scary adventure, and trying to basically reclaim his life. This story is so action packed and fun, but again, very dark and very eerie. Two perspectives that we get sporadically throughout this novel are just terrifying. But with that, we also have this very whimsical dark world that's just so lush and that is just so lush in description. Neil Gaiman just paints this eccentric, dark underground landscape full of all sorts of different types of people and places and just described in ways you would never really anticipate. And I just really, really liked it. It's like eerie and dark and yet inviting and endearing in a lot of ways. And I just flew through this book. I thought it was a lot of fun. It's kind of like a really dark adult middle grade, if that makes any sense. It has like the charm of middle grade, but like the spookiness of an adult book. It's awesome. Speaking of dark middle grade, I'm also going to recommend The Wizards of Once by Chris Hedrick Howell. In this book, I read in the fall and I just thought it was such a cool time. This is a completely illustrated novel full of really like pen drawings or pencil drawings throughout the entire thing and it's just awesome and adds great atmosphere to this story. This is a middle grade fantasy story following two characters. This is a world where magic once existed and flourished until the warriors came and basically eradicated it from the land. One of our main characters is a warrior princess and she finds a magical item and our other main character is a um, 
princeling for the magicians who doesn't have any magical powers at all and their lives cross paths and it kind of just starts the beginning of this really really fun and eerie story. They have to work together to save both of their worlds even when both worlds have such great misunderstanding for the other and it was such a great ride again just a really lush and interesting world and the illustrations just really help paint the picture even further which made this book just so much fun to read. Next up is probably the book with like the luscious landscape just like the most beautiful tangible landscape I've read in a while and that is An Enchantment of Ravens by Margot Rogertson. This is a fae centered story and it's just so delicious. This follows our main character Isabel who is a painter and she lives in a city that's adjacent to the fae world and fae in this story cannot create craft. They can't paint, they can't sing, they can't draw. Therefore human craft is incredibly valuable and Isabel is a master painter. So she makes her living painting portraits or scenes for fae customers. Very rewarding in terms of monetary and protection to her family but incredibly dangerous and she definitely confronts that when she paints a portrait for her first prince customer and paints real human sorrow in his eyes. From there he have whisks her away to the fae world. She gets thrown into complex fae politics and that's kind of where the story takes from there but this book is so endearing in a lot of ways. First off the landscapes are just so wonderfully described by the writer. I mean we're moving through both this town and into so many different fey realms and you can just so clearly see it uh, when you're reading it from the different seasons to the different kingdoms to the different types of dress to everything. Everything is so wonderfully described. It's one of my favorite components of this book which makes it to me feel like a perfect spring read. On top of that this book has a lot of moments of humor. Uh, the Fae I feel like are really depicted a little differently in this story which I enjoyed. They're not something to be jealous of. They are very shallow and they also have a very lack of understanding for human world so because of that there's a lot of humorous moments as well. The humor and the rich landscapes combined I feel like just makes this a wonderful very quick read. I absolutely loved this book. Next up is probably the book that is the most fun and that is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend. This is the perfect middle grade story with the most whimsical and beautiful and magical setting. Follows our main character Morgan Crow, who is cursed and she is blamed for every bad thing that befalls her and her town and her family and most of all she's blamed for her own curse that states that she will die on the eve of her 12th birthday or her 11th birthday? Her 11th birthday. And on the eve of her 11th birthday she's whisked away by this mysterious man in an airship and brought to this town called Nevermore where she joins the set of trials to join in this very uh, mysterious society and that's kind of where the story takes off. It is just so fun. First off the trial elements of this book make it just a joy to read. The trials are so whimsical and interesting and creative. Nevermore itself is just so incredible to read but most of the book also takes place in this whimsical hotel that's constantly changing and full of so many surprises. And a lot of this series is centered around the concept of luck and good and bad. It translates into a lot of different magical things which just makes it a lot of fun. I feel like it's a new creative translation of whimsy and luck and magic and I just enjoyed the entire thing. And the last book I'm going to recommend is Wild Magic by Tamara Pierce. I honestly feel like any Tamara Pierce book is a perfect thing to pick up during the springtime. Her novels are full of adventure and fun and strong female characters and very likable side characters as well. They're often very short in a quartet so you can kind of like marathon the whole thing through the season which I feel like is so great. But Wild Magic is particularly fun because it involves a lot of animals and landscapes because our main character has wild magic which allows her to communicate and not only befriend but like work directly with all sorts of critters from ocean critters to the horses to woodland creatures and it's just so cool to see and also I just feel like it's unique. I feel like I've been reading a lot of like direct magic translation like fireballs and storms and lightning and she's like here's a horse. Also there's a lot of journey components of this and I always love the um, novice to master relationship. A, a young girl learning to come into her own magic is always really fun as well and magic school, magic setting, training of any kind is always fun to read so wild magic. Alrighty guys those are my spring reading recommendations. Let me know down below some books you think would be really perfect for the spring season as I would love to know. And and I'll see you guys soon with another video soon. Goodbye!